Let's get started using a Pikadev OLED module and a Raspberry Pi. We'll connect these two together and get some example code working to generate shapes like lines, rectangles, we'll even do some text and numbers and some fancy animations. Let's get started. Hey. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi single board computer set up to run like a desktop computer. Today I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B. If you need help getting started with Raspberry Pi, we have a beginner's workshop for that. You'll also need a Picadev adapter for Raspberry Pi and an OLED module. And finally, a cable to connect everything together. 100 millimeter Picadev cables work best for Raspberry Pi projects. Start by mounting the adapter to your Raspberry Pi on the GPIO header. On a Raspberry Pi 4, the Ethernet label will face the Ethernet port. On a Raspberry Pi 3B, this will be where the USB connector is. Connect your Picadev cable to one of the adapter ports and connect the other end to your OLED module. And I've just mounted everything to this Picadev platform to keep it nice and stable for the rest of the tutorial. Power up your Pi, connect to a network, and we'll make sure that we have I2C enabled by going to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, go to the Interfaces tab, and just make sure that I2C is enabled. Next, open up Thony, and we'll install or upgrade Picadev as necessary. Go to Tools, Manage Packages, and search for Picadev with two eyes. There it is. And just upgrade or install as necessary. Let's run some code. In the article for this tutorial, find the example to draw some lines, copy that code and paste it into Thony. And press Control R to run. We'll be prompted to save. I'll call this line.py. And immediately we can see a horizontal line, a vertical line, and then a diagonal line appearing on our OLED module. These OLEDs are tricky to film, so you might see in this video, my screen is flickering. That's just how the camera is filming the OLED. Yours won't do this. We first import the driver for the OLED module and a sleep function to create a delay, and then initialize the OLED as display. We call display.hline, which will draw a horizontal line. Starting at the coordinates 10, 10, the line is 80 pixels long and has a color one for white. Zero would be black. The Picadev OLED module is a 128 by 64 pixel display. Pixels are addressed by XY coordinates, starting in the top left with X increasing to the left and Y increasing downwards. That means our top left pixel is 00, zero and our bottom right pixel is 127, 63. We then draw the V line, the vertical line, which goes down the side, that starts at the same point, 10, 10, and has a length 35 with color one. And finally, we draw a two point line. This will join the coordinates 10, 45, which is the end of the vertical line with 90, 10, which is the end of the horizontal line. And that gives us the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. That means that if I change the ending Y coordinate here, I'll make that say 30, and we should see the end of this line jump off and open the triangle. And there we go, nice. Back in the article for the tutorial, find the next example for rectangles and we'll copy that into a new script. So I'll create a new script, paste that, press Control R to run, and we'll call this rect. And immediately you can see we have a tall skinny rectangle on the left and this kind of picture frame on the right. Looking at the code, we have the regular setup, we import and we create the OLED instance called display. This time we draw an unfilled rectangle at 10, 10. So this is the top left corner of the rectangle, the same point that we started with last time. We have a width of 20 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. Now to create this shape, we actually draw a filled rectangle with a fill of one. So we draw a white filled rectangle with a width of 50 and a height of 40. And then we draw a black filled rectangle inside it with a width of 30 and a height of 20. So if I move the black filled rectangle a little bit to the right by changing this 60 to a 70, that will change the top left coordinate of that black rectangle a little bit more to the right. Run the script. And now we've broken our white rectangle into this C shape now. Next up to print some text, we need to download a font data file. Right click the font link and save link as, and save this to wherever your working directory is. I'm working in a Picadev directory in my home directory. Copy that example and we'll paste it into a new file. You can see that font file has appeared as well. Press Control R to run and I'll call this text. 
And now our OLED is showing four lines of text with hello world, this is me, and then two floating point numbers, 123.4567. Let's take a look at the code. After the usual setup, we have some variables, but the important part is where we come to display.text where we can print the literal string hello world. So we can just put in whatever we like here, as long as it's text. The starting coordinates are zero, zero. So we're starting right in the top left. And of course the font color is one for white. Next up, we print a string variable. So just like we can print a string directly, we could also have some variable my string, and that has been assigned to the string, this is me. The only difference is here, we're printing a little bit farther down the Y axis, starting at 0, 15. On our third line, we print the long number 123.4567. So here we have a variable my number declared. And when we call display.text, we can print my number. So long as we wrap it in the string function, which will convert it to a string that can be printed. And finally, to get this truncated string or this rounded string, we use a formatted print statement. And so this syntax is just the syntax to print a floating point number with two decimal places of precision. So now 123.46, you can see we've rounded that second decimal place up. We can create some pretty fancy plots using the graph function. Scroll down to the graph example and we'll copy that into another new file. And press Control R to run. I'll save this as graph. And now we have two lines being plotted as the screen scrolls across. It looks like we have these two like sine waves coming across the screen. Very cool. Let's take a look at the code. After the usual setup, we create two graph objects. Here we have graph one and graph two being set up as graph 2D objects. And these take a min value and max value argument. Min value is the value that will be at the bottom of the screen and max value will be the value that is plotted to the top of the screen. So if we update graph one with the value one, that will appear at the top of the screen, the max value. Likewise for graph two, we initialize it with a min value and max value of negative four and four. Next up in a loop, we update some variables with some kind of scary looking trigonometric functions, but that's not important. That's just to make some nice shapes. We blank the display. It's important to blank the display anytime you're doing animations. And then we update graph 2D. We update graph one with the value we calculated for Y and we update graph two with the value that we calculated for Z. That allows us to plot these two lines independently and with different scalings. Finally, I just draw a zero axis across the display kind of as a zero reference point. Now this smaller, faster frequency wave is actually the wave for Z, but Z has a larger amplitude than Y. The amplitude of Z is two and the amplitude of Y is one. Well, what's going on here is our min and max value. Z is being plotted to graph two, which has a min and max value of four and negative four. So even though it has a larger amplitude than our first graph, it appears smaller because of the scaling. If I set that scaling to match the amplitude and rerun the script, we now have Z being plotted to fill the entire display. How nice is that? So if you wanna plot data from say a temperature sensor, it's these min and max values that you're going to want to change to something that makes sense for whatever data you're trying to represent. If I were trying to plot data from a temperature sensor, I might choose say a min value of zero degrees and a hundred degrees for the max value. Finally, to give you a bit of inspiration as to what's possible using a display, I've connected a PicoDev motion sensor. Here, we're measuring the tilt of the sensor in both the X axis and the Y axis and we're drawing a rectangle on the OLED to represent that tilt angle. So if I tilt to the right, the square moves to the right. If I tilt to the left, it moves to the left. The same for up and down. And that means that I can move it into the corners as well or drive it in this circle. How cool is that? You can find this remix in the bottom of the article, of course, but let's just take a look at what's going on. We do the regular setup, but this time we import the driver for the motion sensor as well. We create our display and our motion sensor objects. Because we're doing an animation, we always have to start with a fill zero so we don't smear our shapes across the screen. We redraw them instead. And then we just get the tilt angle. So we call motion.readAngle and that will give us an angle for Z and an angle for Y. Then we take those angles and we convert them into an XY coordinate to draw our rectangle on the screen. And finally, we just draw a rectangle at that X and Y location on the screen. We have this tuning parameter sensitivity, so we could change that to, I don't know, let's go for half the sensitivity, 25. 
And now I have to move the motion sensor a lot further to move that square around. And so there you have it, a bunch of starter examples for using the PicoDev OLED module with a Raspberry Pi. If you make something cool from these examples or if you just need a little bit of help, let us know on our forums. We're full-time makers and here to help. Until next time, thanks for watching.